episode 2 of the prologue of uh, Frostfall. It is here where we are going to look into the characters, the heroes of that campaign, and the players that uh, signed up alongside with it, and, well, also a little bit into what they have encountered so far. As of now, the campaign is running about six months, and it is always difficult to start in the midst of a campaign, so I will do my best to give you a first summary of what has happened, um, so you can kind of see what the background to, uh, towards that story is and why people are behaving the way they are behaving. Let's start with the characters first and foremost, because that is always the center of the uh, story. You already know, if you have watched the first video, that the characters are high-profile criminal exiles that actually aren't criminals. Matter of fact, they have an amnesia and it turned out, or they have found out, that most probably they have been set up and um, sent to this island as, um, as uh, yeah, maybe as to eliminate them from a larger, uh, larger game or from a larger conflict that they were partaking on. The first character I'd like to introduce to you is Pytek, the Slayer. Pytek is a wonderful character. Um, Pytek is currently playing uh, Sword Sage. Sword Sage, for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, D&D, is a martial character, very nimble. You can picture him as an agile being. Pytek, um, as a race, is a Nirav. Niravs um, are frog-like creatures, and uh, they come from a different plane of existence. Only a few of them live in the Forgotten Realms, and those who do have their, have their reasons. Pytek, in his background story, has a very, very uh, complex uh, um, uh, background story with uh, two parents that ever since have been haunted and uh, were trying to escape a political intrigue uh, um, uh, which forced them to the Forgotten Realms. All of that is not known to him, so let's talk a little bit about what you what you can expect of Pytek. This frog warrior is brave, uh, he has a large heart, and he has pride in what he's doing. Pytek, over the course of the campaign, is often a scout, and he will ambush from the dark, but Pytek also has a darker side. Within the campaign, Pytek volunteered to help a large, powerful spirit um, to be brought back to, uh, uh, to, their, uh, to their people. Pytek indeed said, well, it's no problem. You can possess me, I will carry you back to your tribe, and in return your tribe will help us. Well, so, uh, so the deal was struck and Pytek uh, kept his end of the, uh, of the deal. However, the spirit was so powerful that something within Pytek changed. He lost his eyes, which were just melting due to the sheer amount of power that was entering his body. And now he's a blind frog monk uh, that is uh, very, very entertaining. He has a darker side that lets him rage from time to time, and he's trying to desperately control this anger. We do have Uriel as the second character, a calm, wise man who once came from, again, a different uh, dimension, uh, a plane called Eberron. That is a plane of tinkery, a plane of, a plane of craftsmanship, where magic meets technology. Uriel has left that place, however, and has, um, was eager to explore the Forgotten Realms. What he got himself into is unclear because he doesn't remember, but Uriel is very firm on what he wants to do. Uriel believes in the, uh, in, in the order of the planes, and as soon as a planar conflict will arise, something that is out of the line, he will be the sheriff, he will be the, um, the, the guardian, the, uh, the one that is uh, restoring planar order. Furthermore, Uriel has a keen sense of, um, of tactics, and as a druid, uh, who is um, a, a caster, a mage of nature in uh, in D and D, he always likes to help the uh, the whole party with either finding something um, in nature or making them travel faster. You can see him 
very often is um, is a spellcaster that is um, uh, casting benef uh, beneficial um, spells on the on the party. So you could call him a buffer, probably. Uriel has um, a dark side as well. Sometimes his uh, anger uh, takes over, and that is where his wild shaping form comes in. Uriel loves to wild shape into animals, specifically into dinosaurs of different sorts. The third character is Ilias. Ilias Hylae, son of Elrus, the most right, uh, righteous, rightful, and upstanding moral, um, uh, moral character of the whole group. Ilias is a good man. He is a, he is a human being. Uh, he is a believer in Heronius, a good, uh, a good god of, um, of uh, 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 Celia's behavior, of vigilance and of honesty. This is what you can expect from the character. He's the uh, shining knight of uh, the group. He dedicates himself uh, to to help others and be the martyr if uh, if need be. He's the frontline tank, wears a very heavy plate and is the first one to uh, to enter battle, but also the last one to leave. It is not unheard of that Ilias will protect the retreat of his uh, uh, comrades, even if at the expense or risk uh, of his own life. Ilias has a very sound moral codex, and over the course of the campaign, he spared the life of a couple of um, enemies. When the party was fighting very, very early, they even um, spared the life of an underdarkling, um, matter of fact, one of uh, the evil races of uh, the Underdark. Ilias has taken it ever since upon him to mentor that uh, character. And you can expect it to be more a uh, uh, Star Wars kind of um, uh, mentor-mentee relationship where he's trying to talk sense into the character. The NPC there that um, he was talking about um, is Salutus. Salutus, once uh, a proud goblin, um, was enslaved by the Drow and uh, was uh, magically altered into his new form. Um, spikes are covering his uh, very body <clears throat> and his malintent was forcing him to attack the, uh, the party early in, in the game. Now, Salutus is uh, nowadays a permanent companion. Let's move on. Rudy, Rudy of the Phoenix, a beautiful woman, Rudy, who is uh, playing a, a mixed class between bard and healer is, um, and you can expect exactly what the two classes are saying. As a bard, you are inspiring and helping with, um, with music and uh, with uh, inspirational magic. And as a healer, you are healing the party. But there's more to the story of Rudy, uh, who is nowadays known as Rudy of the Phoenix. Apparently, Rudy has a bloodline that, uh, that connects her with an order once active on the island of Nim. The Order of the Phoenix, who um, is almost wiped out, was discovered by Rudy. And her discovery, alongside with uh, the discovery of her mentor, led her into the path of the Phoenix, which is her um, kind of becoming uh, a priest of the of the Phoenix. So she's currently like engulfed in in a um, in, in a red aura, her hair seems to be fluorescent and, 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 and burn the whole time. And she's very affine to, um, to fire and fire magic of certain, uh, of certain kinds. You can see uh, Rudy in the back line of uh, the combat. She's uh, usually playing, uh, playing uh, in, a defensive, uh, uh, in a defensive manner because she's, um, she's not very like tanky, not very not very sturdy. She, however, can heal and she, however, can uh, change the tides of a battle quite substantially. It was more than once that she and her, uh, that her magic um, was uh, the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful um, uh, fight 
she was saving her comrades numerous times. Rudy is um, an alchemist uh, 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 on top of all of that, and she, cre uh, she has created a little egg, the egg of the phoenix, um, the, uh, which is uh, an elemental, a fire elemental, which is following her. The fire elemental is like constantly freezing in the arctic temperature of Nym, and Rudy is um, trying to keep it and uh, keep it alive and bolster it as good as possible. Haroon, another very interesting character, is a former war mage. He's playing as a war mage. He's probably um, the magical artillery of uh, of the whole group. Haroon is a very thought through method methodology uh, methodological character. He knows the ins and outs of battles and positions. He he strives for greatness in battle, but he also um, tries to 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 modify his environment. And by modify I mean he shows great interest in in the political intrigues. Uh, he shows great interest in what has happened and why it has happened. Harun uh, has the aspiration of becoming a great leader once in his lifetime. And for him, adventuring is a means to fulfill that destiny. As it stands, he is also one of the tacticians of the group. He always will come up with a keen plan and he is not shy in, in sharing that plan. Harun is a direct most confronting personality, very much aligned to his his um, his use of magic. He sees conflict as a reasonable way of resolving uh, differences of interest. And the stronger person might, in the end, be the one that can uh, can better dictate the way of the world. Um, Harun is a knowledgeable individual. He's probably the one that knows most about Nym and what has happened here. Last but not least, the latest addition to the group, Derek. Derek Erkinin is a monkey. Um, well, he's not a monkey, but he plays a character that uh, that is a monk-like, uh, monkey-like um, uh, person. It is a race that looks basically like um, like uh, half man, half monks, and the party freed him in a city to the north, which I'm going to explain in a in a different video. Um, he was freed um, from a kind of stasis almost. He can remember what has happened, and uh, Derek was one of the leaders of a resistance group. He fought in the battle against uh, the Prince um, uh, the Prince Moritz. He fought of the darkness and he was very much helping to free the lands of Nym. What has happened to his comrades remains unclear, but Derek um, being captured and put into, into a stasis kind of has slept over the last 80 to 90 years. So it took him some time to adapt. What you can see from Derek though is he developed an extremely keen sense of, um, of tracking. He is very proficient with a bow. He's playing a ranger, uh, scout, uh, which is a dual character class, uh, focusing on bows and uh, and damage with bows. So he's the guy that is uh, doing the trick shots, very agile, often leaping around uh, trees and branches and shooting from in between them. This is the way that Derek uh, knows best how to fight. Derek, however, is also a very proud man. Um, he takes pride in what he has done and uh, he does not want to be trifled with. One of the things uh, that Derek despises are undead. He hates them, and his uh, fate seems to be somehow always tied to undead. He fought them 80 years ago, and he still keeps fighting them. These are the characters, ladies and gentlemen. I will use another video or the next one to go through the world of Nim and uh, where we currently stand. This is taking a little bit longer than expected, but I wanted to give uh, the players a proper introduction.